Recently, we hosted a whiteboard session called How to Learn Anything, and I introduced this concept of the five ingredients. The five ingredients is a simple way to break down anything you want to learn into more understandable chunks so that you can decipher why something works. It's like a dish. If you can break down what the core ingredients are in that dish that you love, then with a little experimentation, you can make that dish yourself. This segment was not included in the video of the whiteboard session we released on the channel because we wanted to focus more on how attendees were using this method to break down artwork they were interested in. But I think it's important to see how the crew we had in the studio did it as well. So here's the result of our session, breaking down the work of Jean-Michel Basquiat. All right, so here's what I want you guys to do, okay? I want you to look at this and I want you to describe to me what you see. So describe things that you see, and I'll write them down. It's, oh, all right, fair. Go ahead. Think. Messy. Okay, what else? It's colorful. He crosses out words. We'll leave the judgment out, keep it objective. So crosses out words is very specific, so that would be on this side. I should have wrote, wrote it on that side. Keep going. I want to say simple. Okay. Trying to tell a story. How do you know that? Because it looks like there's a lot. It's more than just like a person's face. Okay. There's a whole lot. That's going on. that's another level of interpretation. Try to just stick with what you see. Okay. Busy. Okay. Keep going. Layered. There's layers of color and words and shapes and people and. Okay. What else? There's a person in each one. Okay. There's people. I would almost say it's a self-portrait. How do you know that? I'm a fan. <laughs> no, only by what you see. Anybody? Anatomy. Anatomy? Bones, skeletons. Okay, human anatomy. Yep. Trademarks as far as like break, break. the coin and the, or was it the little C for so the copyright? So let's just call it a coin. Yeah, it looks like there's... Money? It looks at society, yeah, like this copyright. There's like. All right, he likes to use the copyright symbol and trademark. And uh, there's, there's currency. Okay, what else? See, it looks. Diagram. Yeah. I'm gonna get that. Oh, that's good. So there's a diagram. Whenever I see Basquiat, I think of violence. Violence, yeah. It kind of has that feeling to it. Right. It's not violence. child. There's like a violence to the childishness. A child, childlike quality. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Here's another thing. Sometimes when we have three things to look at, we bounce around. So yeah, then yeah. I would just bring it up to this centerpiece. Focuses on Center? one. Th there's focus. Like there's one centerpiece. Am I, what am I supposed to be looking at? I don't know, dude. Centerpiece, huh? Centerpiece. Okay, I could tell. Uh, you you're, you guys are doing exactly what my son did, which oh, is, good. he's going through a bunch of words, and I'm like, hey, how, how could you go, go draw a centerpiece? What are you gonna do? Right? What does there's that mean? A, there's a main character. There's one character. Doesn't look like there's a ton of characters in this book. Okay, one character. So if you draw more, more than one character, you're screwed. It's like intentionally not realistic. Not realistic. Okay. What's not realistic then? It's what's not, a more abs What's a more descriptive word? Abstract would be the word. I guess, but... Is it abstract? Is it figurative? It's his interpretation of a real thing. But he's not using real skin color. No. No real background. But okay. The way that we would say it is not rendered. Not rendered. So we're getting closer. That's that's pretty specific language. That's good. There's no shading, right? Yeah. There's no value. Okay, this is good. No value or shading. There are phrases. Short phrases. Mm-hmm. Okay. That goes with writing. Mm-hmm. It's a play on words, so he'll like misspell words on purpose. There we go. There's misspelled words. Getting more specific ever so each time. Great. So let's look at this piece here. 
uh, some people might say because it's skull, it's a skull, so it's a subject matter. It's already violent. That that could be or the horns. It feels like satanic or devil like, or the broad shoulders or this person breaking through the box. And the way I look at it, potentially, and Eric, correct me if I'm wrong here. Some of your interpretations of this feeling violent come from the line quality that it's rough, it's jagged. And there's, it feels like it was done really fast. And therefore, maybe the hand that was holding it had some angst or violence to it. So it's the way that the mark was made that you feel that way. So this is a perfect segue for us to dive into the next chart here. I know that some of you guys who are paying attention, I created an open loop. An open loop is a story that doesn't have an ending. It's not closed. And that I said, there's this thing called the five ingredients, but I've been tiptoeing around it. I haven't really talked about it. So now we're going to close that loop. Okay. So this is a closed loop. Now the five ingredients, what I want you to be able to do, and you can do this with a piece of paper. Everybody, I want you to participate if you, if you wish to try to draw something, one element, just one component using a pretty blunt instrument and trying to render one thing in each of these boxes. And as you draw the thing in the box, write what you see. For some of you who are more uh, word dominated, write the words first and then try to draw that. So I'm going to show you an example right now. So I'm going to draw an element from this and I see the skull. Let me just reference it. So this is how I'm going to draw it, right? Even though that's not exact because my, my instrument isn't thick enough. And there's like the skull head here, something like that. Okay. Now that I've stripped just that one element of the skull, and I think there's some little lines here. Okay. How might we describe this now, Eric? What, what, how do we describe what we just saw? What is this? Okay. So there's something about the line quality mm. that you're picking up on. Yeah. So if we want to do something like Basquiat, but not literally copy it, what is it that we have to do? Not straight and different thicknesses. Okay, so we're going to say, um, in terms of what we're observing, we're going to say line quality, okay? Mm. So that's the broad observation. We're going to say it's irregular. That it's inconsistent. Hopefully I'm spelling this right. And that it's rough, maybe? Yeah. Okay, we're getting pretty good here. So now we know if our line quality is too smooth, too consistent, it's not going to be the thing. Yeah. We get that now. What's interesting is my son looked at this and he said, Dad, it looks like he doesn't know how to draw. Yeah. It doesn't look like he knows how to draw at all. And it looks like he's drawing. And this is where I know I'm doing my job as a father and as a teacher. He's like, it looks like he's drawing with his non-dominant hand. I was like, wow. my boy, I think you might be right. <laughs> I think you might be right. He's drawing with his non-dominant hand. Ah, uh, so it forces you not to be able to render well. That's pretty good. So look at this, guys. We seem now to have one, like count, count. Uh, what is this? The count on Sesame Street? Mm. One. Ha, ha, ha. We have one ingredient. Right. We have one ingredient. This is pretty cool. Okay, so that was just off one observation, the line quality. Now, I can draw this, but maybe we make observations about color, about textures, about the words that are being used. So in terms of what I'm seeing here, I'll draw this, this person. Yeah? Okay. Um, figures, let's look at this figure, okay? You guys ready? We're gonna do this together. The figure, what do we know about this figure? These figures that he's drawing. How can we describe these figures? Unproportional. Okay. Uh, the proportions are a little off. I will say are distorted. Yeah? Yep. Uh, they lack emotion. Okay, there's one really key thing here. And the key thing is this. They're flat. They're not drawn in perspective at all. Mm -hmm. Of course. You guys see that? So if they twist and turn, 
that requires a whole different skill set, different kind of rendering. So they're very flat. So if you draw a character and, you know, maybe my son goofed here a little bit, everything has to face the camera. And from these three, we're going to also say is faces camera. Very good. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is when you guys said it's very colorful, my son did not describe it as that. With the exception of this piece, which has some colors, uh, when, when you describe colorful, we imagine Baskin Robbins and rainbows, right? It's not quite Baskin Robbins and rainbows, not even close. So he's like, okay, dad, there's only a minimal use of colors and the colors look dirty. Okay, so that's how we can describe that, okay? So I'm gonna write here colors, okay? Minimal colors and that they feel dirty, right? That um, there's a lot of black. Okay, so let's talk about tools. I wanna now focus on tools. What kind of tools can you decipher from looking at the work? So the tools influence the work. So if we say what tools were used, some people will use Photoshop, Illustrator, camera. Some people use paintbrushes. Some people use stick. Yes, it's called an oil pastel. Yeah, that's what he's using a lot, I think. Oil pastel. Canvas, perfect. And paint. There's still paint in there, right? But um, there's nothing that's fine. So we're going to say thick brushes. Okay, thick brushes, we know that. So if you use a fine sable hairbrush, it's gonna to get a totally different quality. And then we have to use the words. The words are very important, and I think we hit a bunch of the words already. So let me see if I can draw some of the words here. Here's one, perfect. Um, I notice when he writes, the letter forms are not so smooth. And there's a copyright symbol here. There's things. Um, that he spells, he, he purposely misspells words. Art pumping. Oh, okay, here we go. He crosses out words. Thumping. Okay. Okay, so let's, words, okay? The words he chooses, right? He misspells, crosses out. Scribbles over, adds the C and the TM, and short phrases. They're incomplete. And there's something about this that, to me, um, it's like stream of consciousness, whatever. It's like there doesn't seem to be a rhyme or reason. And that starts to give us an idea of what makes a Basquiat piece a Basquiat piece. Now, I did not do this for my son. He did his own version and he has five ingredients for everything that he does. This is how I teach him to teach himself because his tendency is, dad, dad, tell me what it is. What am I supposed to be doing? I'm like, no, go back, do your five ingredients. And he would do this many, many times because each time he was stuck, I'd say, let me see your five ingredients. And he would either say something that's too specific or too broad and would reflect in the work that he was doing. So I knew that if he couldn't see this, he couldn't make it. So what Nils Lindstrom, my, my former lettering teacher said about you can't draw what you don't know and what you don't know what you haven't seen. So that's really critical. So we kind of rush and say, I got it, I got it. I figured it out, dad. So that's when we need to take a step back and do our five ingredients. Now, I'm gonna hold up this piece. And I'm gonna say this not as a father, I'm gonna say this as a professor of design. <laughs> I'm going to say he missed a few things here. You can see that the colors, even though they're similar in hue, the way that they blend together or don't blend together, and they don't feel dirty to me. So he got the colors correct. But I think he was a little afraid to let the colors bleed together and drag his brush. His subject matter here uh, is not facing the camera. It's actually quite, even though it looks flat, it's turned a little bit because of the position of the eyes. So he still needs to get into this. And I don't see him using the oil pastel. I don't see that. And I still see like, he's obviously as a 14 year old boy, he's not a master painter at this point in time. So I give this a solid C minus. Yeah, he just unsubscribed to my channel, but that's all right. If you felt like this video is valuable, we have the rest of the whiteboard session posted in the link in the description below. There are also more whiteboard sessions on our channel and more to come. 
Thanks for watching and see you in the future.